Hello everyone, welcome to the week before winter break. Hello, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. It is the end of the day on Monday, December 19th, 2022. Yes, we're working all the way up until December 22nd. December 23rd, Friday is a teacher planning day, but it is available for us to opt as a day that we don't have to come in. So I am using that as my first opt day of the year. But wow, it's been a whirlwind. My poor cold teacher is still very, very sick. So I split up her homeroom this morning, made some work for them because we are still without internet in our school. So we lost internet on Friday. That put a hold on the state testing for the Progress Monitoring 2 assessment for the FAST Florida assessment. And wow, today we come, no internet still. So they had to postpone the FAST testing again. So I had to put together a packet for her students because she emailed us her set plans, but I couldn't access my email. So just to plan ahead, I got in contact with her during the day and I got some ideas on what I can put together. So I am going to make copies for two different packets for tomorrow and for Wednesday, just in case. And those copies will be ready for me for tomorrow, along with the split list so that everything is good to go. Now, I do want to go home, but before I do, I want to rearrange my desk. And just so you know, I'm feeling OK. I also took a COVID test yesterday just to make sure because COVID cases are on the rise this time of year. So I'm negative and I feel fine. I don't have any symptoms. But today I did wear my mask and I told the kids, I'm sorry, I love you, but I can't hug you because I don't want to get sick. There's a lot of icky germs going around, so let's do some air hugs. So <laughs> that breaks my heart, but I'm just trying to make sure that I don't go into winter break sick because that would be a bummer, you know, to go into winter break not feeling well. That has happened to me in the past. So let me show you what the desk looked like, and then the next clip will be of me showing you the new setup. So here are the desks. I did try this method of just grouping two desks together, but I don't like how crowded my room looks. Plus the kids move the desk all the time. So I think I'm gonna go back to my C or my E, whatever I had at the beginning of the school year, because I, I think I liked it a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt it again and we'll see how it goes. I mean, or I can try to do small groups of L's, but I'm gonna brainstorm and see how this new seating arrangement will come out. Also, we had another drawing break at the end of the day. This time I introduced my students to neurographic art. So I am not done. I have to still do that part and then I wanna add some color, but really, really nice. At first, some of the students were a little hesitant because they thought it was so hard, but literally you're just drawing scribble lines and then making sure anywhere the lines meet, if there is a V or a sharp corner, you just you know curve it and make it into a nice curved area and then you add other shapes and other patterns and you can color it and it's a beautiful work of art so by the end uh, some of them didn't want to finish because they wanted to continue let me show you one that i created last time so here's one that i created last school year so as you can see once you are done you can add color add other shapes or patterns etc and it's your own very work of art it also puts you in like sort of a meditative state so it was very nice and it had some nice lo-fi music playing in the background. But without further ado, let me go ahead and do this desk arrangement. And then after that, I'm going to make the copies of the packets. And then it's time to go home. So let me go ahead and do that now. And here is the new desk setup. I haven't made the seating arrangement yet. So the students will sit wherever they find their desk. But I did bring back the chair pockets. And I just like this format because I feel like there's more space. Everybody's not like on top of each other. Everybody's facing the front of the board or the front of the classroom. And yeah, hopefully this will work until the end of the week and when we come back, but I'm happy with the setup. And yeah, I think that's all that I'm going to do for now because my hips started hurting because I then swept the floor because I remember one of the custodians last week told me that the other custodians were at a training until Wednesday so they're only going to come in and empty the garbage cans so they won't have time because they're short on staff to you know sweep the floor mop it etc so I just did it myself and I am exhausted but yeah happy with this and I'm glad that it's like 355 but I still need to make copies of Ms. Gonzalez's packet. So let me go ahead and do that 
first before I let you go for today. 30 minutes later and the copies for my co-teacher and her students are ready for tomorrow and Wednesday. So tomorrow I'm just going to give them one of our old beginning of the year math tests that has 55 questions and all the mathematical skills that they will learn in fourth grade. So they would just do their best in finishing this packet is actually 50 questions. And then I gave them a passage for social studies, talks about pythons invading the Everglades. And my co-teacher told me that she wanted her students to do something related to the Everglades. So they have this passage to read along with questions to answer right here. So this will be for tomorrow. And then for Wednesday, I put together this packet that has a variety of different skills for them to practice. This is addition and subtraction, some addition here more subtraction on this page. Then they have some multiplication practice and division practice as well, as well as long division. And then for social studies, they have this map that they're going to answer questions on. If I can turn the page. These are the questions that they will answer for that map and then vocabulary. And then they'll read a passage about Florida's national parks, which includes the Everglades. So it basically goes over, and this of course is FCAT, but hey, I don't have access to the new social studies book anymore because I only teach reading and math. So this is what I had, and you know, that information is still good. So that is ready for them for the next two days. And I just want to make sure that that was ready before I left today. And yeah, my friends, I think that's all that I'm going to share with you for today, Monday. I'm just going to start gathering my things, go home, relax. Tomorrow, is another day it's now the end of the day on tuesday december 20th 2022 and it's another day of no internet and i'm so glad that i still have my external hard drive with me because that's the only way i've been able to manage printing out work for the students for my co-teacher and also i started a new warm-up activity for them as soon as they walk in so i've been able to get ideas from ebooks that i have in the hard drive because I do have a lot of my things in Dropbox and in OneDrive, but without internet, I can't access them into my main computer so I can print them out. So yeah, kudos to me for still keeping my hard drive, which I had thought about getting rid of it, but now I'm like, oh, it might be better to just, you know, keep it around because you never know. Anywho, so this morning I started with my Block 2 class, which is my co-teacher's homeroom. I split up my homeroom this morning and I gave them the packet of work. I think I showed it to you yesterday. They were working on some math problems and reading a passage about Burmese pythons invading the Everglades for social studies. They had 10 questions in that passage. And some of the students were actually finishing their work before they came to me. So I ended up creating this choice board for when they're done. So here it is. It is a document that I created on PowerPoint. So I'm done. What can I do? So I gave them a choice board with nine different activities. Of course, they include writing and math, science and social studies, as well as some fun ones so that they can have and pick something to do when they are done. So that is the little choice board paper that I created. When I had my block two this morning, we were working on our packet from last week on Everglades mammals and the nine banded armadillo. So I wanted to make sure that they finished their Venn diagrams on those five animals from the first passage, the marsh rabbit, the gray fox, the white tailed deer, the West Indian manatee and the Florida panther. And then we went over that along with the vocabulary words. So here's my Venn diagram with the white tailed deer. And here's the vocabulary matching activity that we went over. But I also worked on showing the students the different ways that they could have compared the different animals. So this one, of course, is the Florida panther. And then here is the West Indian manatee. Then the gray fox. And the marsh rabbit. So then it was time for lunch. And with my block one, which is my home room, I had them finish their posters which I took a couple of clips of them going back with their teams and putting check marks so that they can put a check mark next to the interesting fact that they found in that poster. We talked about it and then we did the same thing with comparing and contrasting the two mammals and going over the vocabulary. Now again, because I don't have <laughs> 
internet, I can't use my online timers, and yeah, I could use my phone timer or a timer on my iPad, but I wanted to project it on the board, so I quickly made a one minute timer on PowerPoint. Now, the way that I made it is I basically have 61 slides, and it starts doing countdown, so I just went in and I typed up every single one of these, and then in the timer, so when we go to slideshow, not slideshow, um, transitions. When we go to transitions in the top, right here in the top, duration one second and pass after one second. So that automatically when I press the show, it starts to tick down and count down to, you know, zero. So let me go back because I didn't start from the very first one. But right here is the first one, the first slide, I'm sorry. And there it goes. So, oh, I have to actually hit to start it because that way I could easily give instructions. And then when it was time to start the timer, I can just start and then it goes. So it starts ticking down. And uh, yeah, I just created this. It took a couple of minutes to create, not a lot of time. But now I have a one minute timer to use if I don't have internet. And when it reaches down to zero, it makes this sound. Which, as you can see, doesn't stop until I stop the show. The students actually picked that laser sound, and some of them were actually pretending to be playing laser tag when it went out. But it was a good reminder. I, I think I'm going to change it to chimes because the laser was a little bit too energetic for them because they got a little bit you know, silly after a while. But that is a really simple way that I created a timer that I can use. And of course, the background, I made it black, but I can change it to the whatever background color I want. The same thing with the font and the font type or the font color. But anyway, I digress. So that's what we did. And they went ahead and they put their checks on their posters, which you can see the end results here, here with the gray fox, the white tailed deer, the West Indian manatee, and the Florida panther. So they like this activity because, again, it has them moving around and being out of their seats, working in groups. And, you know, they can then take that information and help them make the Venn diagram, which, of course, they will use for their podcast. We haven't been able to use Flip because, again, we don't have Internet. <laughs> so whenever the Internet comes back, the students can start working on recording themselves doing the Flip Grid or Flip podcast on the two mammals that they're comparing and contrasting. So a great way for them to practice, you know, group skills and listening and speaking and also taking a Venn diagram into writing and then obviously recording themselves sharing that information. So all in all, that is what we did today. And I wanted to show you the progress on my neurographic art that I started yesterday. Here it is. I finished going over all of the lines, thickening them a little. And then I started noticing that I can add little fish around. So there are five little fish around here. And I started doing some coloring and choosing the colors that I want to use for the entire artwork. Then I started another one to show my homeroom class, which I had this afternoon, how they can make their own and take the design wherever they feel like going. Now, let me share with you the titles of the three ebooks that I'm using for our daily warm up activity. So, right now, the tomorrow's daily warm-up activity is ready to go on their desk. Yes, they're going to read a biography on Helen Keller, answer a few questions, and then on the back they're going to do a writing activity where they will write goodwill messages or good wishes to people. And once they do that, they will choose one of their messages to turn into a greeting card. And then I just created this very simply so that they can open it up, write their message there, maybe draw a picture, color it, design it, and give it to the person that they choose to give it to. So that is currently on top of all of the desks. So the first ebook is one that I've had in my high drive for a while, and it is from Teacher Created Resources and is daily warm-ups in reading for grade four, and they have it for different grade levels. For yesterday's writing activity on the back of their reading warm-up, they had a writing activity using this work of art right here from this book, 101 Picture Prompts to Spark Super Writing, and this is a scholastic professional book. And then the Good Will and Wishes activity, writing activity, comes from the Giant Write Every Day book, which is an Evan Moore ebook for grades one through six, I believe. So I was able to choose that activity from there, and they have it by months, as you can see in the table of contents. 
So that's all I have to share with you for today. I will see you tomorrow. Hello everyone. Welcome to the end of the day on Wednesday. It has been a whirlwind of a day and we can definitely tell that the kids are ready for break even though a lot of them are like, no, but we'll miss you in the next two weeks. We don't want to leave you and that is so, so sweet. But today, wow, <laughs> their energy levels were really high, but you know, we made it and we had a pretty good day. And at the end of the day, we had a little nice activity in the media center. They had a nice little spread of goodies for us to enjoy. And the tables were decorated very nicely and it was put together by our administration and PTSA. We love our PTSA. They do so much for us and we're really, really grateful. And uh, one of my students dropped off, their mom dropped off a little, nice little gift for me, which is in this Dollar Tree bag, but it's so sweet. It's this little box that is a house. Look how cute that is. So that is for me to take home. And I also have another little bag that a student gave me. So nice little gifts. And one of the students is like, Miss just what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, I don't need anything. You don't have to give me anything. But it's so sweet. We were doing little wishing you goodwill, peace and goodwill, since one of their writing assignments for this morning was about remembering that in December, a good tradition is to do goodwill wishes for other people. So I had them think of three different goodwill messages that they would like to say to others and then make a little card with it. So let me show you what that looked like. So first I read about Helen Keller and answered these three questions. This again comes from that ebook that I shared with you from Teacher Created Resources. And this one is an Evan Moore book from Giant Write Every Day and Peace and Goodwill. So here they will write their messages and this was the bonus. So I created this little greeting card for them to work on and create and on the inside they could write their message and if they wanted to draw a picture they could over here and then they could write who created the card and give it to that person so we were working on that and then of course we also had another drawing break i figure that that is something really nice that they enjoy and it's like a little nice brain break that we can have so this is the scene that we created today so this is actually the one that i created with my afternoon class but let me find the one that i made this morning so you can see it's pretty much the same and it's this one right here so as you can see pretty much the same i do want to say that sometimes when you draw things more than once you can see the difference and try to maybe make it better but i also tell the students oh my goodness i just noticed something like this is like a zoomed out version of the guided drawing that i did with them last friday and this is like a zoomed in version of the snowman trying to catch the snowflake so that was really cute and that is all that i have to share with you today let me make my warm-up for tomorrow morning and then gather my things and go because this teacher is very tired. But before that, let me show you my outfit for today. Today was dressed to impress, but I just wanted to dress. I, I, yesterday, I kind of dressed cute too. And today, I also wanted to dress cute. And I actually put on my makeup today because I thought it would be fun. So this is my outfit for today. I really love these buffalo print pants or gingham pants and my shoes from Target. So yeah, my nice little outfit for today. So that is all. Tomorrow is our last day with the students before we go on our two week break. So I will see you then. Hello everyone. It is the end of the day on Thursday and we have made it. It is now my start of our winter break along with the students. I just also finished my Minecraft club after school and got the calendar changed, my lesson plans put on the on next to the computer and the room ready to go for when we come back on January 9th. So we have two weeks off and I'm so glad. Last night I started feeling like my throat was kind of feeling weird and this morning it hurt a lot and it's been hurting off and on today. I just hope it's nothing serious, maybe it's just a cold. And I was trying to make sure I wasn't like, I was taking the proper precautions, you know, wearing my mask, not like letting the students know that I couldn't hug them, but I hope it's nothing because, oh my goodness. I don't want to spend most of my break being sick. I think I did that last year. It's been a whirlwind, to say the least, with my health. 
but I wanted to give you a rundown of what happened today. So this morning, the students had a warm up. They were reading a fantasy story about three wishes and character development. So they answered those questions and then they had a writing activity where they wrote about what they plan to do during winter break or like it was like a different prompt it was guiding them as like the weatherman has gave you a special forecast what would that surprise forecast be for your vacation write about it but i told them you could write about that or you could write about how you plan to spend your winter break so this is the passage that they read and the questions that they answered and this was the forecast for your vacation writing activity that they could work on my students have also been enjoying coloring pages and you know I have been doing those guided drawings with them. So I actually turned two of my guided drawings into digital art and I created it like a coloring book page and I printed out for the students that wanted it, which was basically all of them. So here is one of those digital arts that I created and here is the other one so that students can go ahead and color them in. After that, we were working on completing the entire packet for our mammals of the Everglades and nine banded armadillo. So we make sure we finish our vocabulary questions and the comprehension questions, as well as showing students how to create their podcast written and... I also went to Flip, which is a new name for Flipgrid, and showed them how to create a Flipgrid video. Now, we haven't had internet all week. We got it yesterday in the middle of the day, and we didn't really have time for them to use the computer so they can film their Flipgrid, but I'm gonna have it as an assignment that they can do when we come back. So this is the Flipgrid assignment that I created, and I did create two sample videos because I have two groups. So here's the first one. Hello everyone, today I would like to teach you all about the similarities and differences between armadillos and white-tailed deers. So, so that's the beginning of that one and here's the other one. Hello everyone, in today's podcast, we're gonna look at two of Florida's mammals and how are they similar and how they are different. So the two animals we're gonna be talking about today are armadillos and the Florida panther. So let's get started. So in doing those two video examples, I was showing the students step by step and how they can add clips and do different animations and so forth. And they got really excited. So I'm looking forward to them coming back from break and working on that project. So that is all that I have to share for you for this week, week 18 of the school year. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought and questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.